Good morning, church. How's everyone doing today? Who got here early enough for the breakfast today? A few of us. Well, the good news is now you're here on time to see Jesus, to get in his presence. Um, so if you're excited to be here, if you're truly here just to get in God's presence, to get closer to God today, if you'll stand up and just shout on to Jesus and praise Jesus for a minute. Father God, I pray right now that you just come into this place, that your presence is welcome right here, God. I pray that you just anoint the praise and worship team, God. God, it's not about the words we're singing or the songs we sing or how we sound, God, but it's about us truly just crying out to you, knowing that you are our Lord and Savior. God, I pray that you just continue to move in miraculous ways right now, God, and that we continue, God, to just call in the name of Jesus and know that there's authority in your name, God. And I pray in the name of Jesus for Ukraine right now, God, that you just continue to just protect each and every person, God. You have a purpose for every single situation. I pray that it comes out in your will, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I pray that we can just have a, a renewal in our minds, souls, and spirits right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I ran out of that grave. 
everybody how y'all like this weather we're having isn't it beautiful just wait till we get to heaven though this ain't nothing this ain't nothing compared to what heaven's gonna be like so I want to welcome everybody if you're a first time attender with us thank you so much for being with us uh underneath your seats there's gonna be a little white basket there's a visitor card in there we would love for you to fill out that visitor card and in our little welcome center out here if you could turn that in they'll have a gift for you but thank you so much for being here at Rio East uh, right now we're going to get into our giving part of the service and so I had something all wrote down and planned but I just want to tell you the verse to begin with so Matthew six twenty one says for where your treasure is there your heart will be also so the question is what is your treasure is your treasure Jesus, or is it that almighty bank account, or wallet, or dollar? So yesterday in the Connect Group, we got to talking about uh, giving and tithing, and, and a lot of people say, I can't afford to give. So we were, we were just talking, and, and the subject is, you can't afford not to give. You cannot afford it, because you're missing out on all the blessings God has for you. And, you know, the last few weeks we've been hearing about rewards. And, you know, when you accept Jesus' invitation, when you accept it and, and, and you're saved, what a reward you have already been given. But the question is, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with what you've been given? How are you going to share that reward? Well, part of it is to give generously to other people. So how, how many times this, this past week have you had the opportunity to give generously, not necessarily with money, we got to take the money factor out, put the money to the side, because that's not what it's about. Tithing is not about money. It's absolutely about your heart. So how many times this week have you had the opportunity to give generously to somebody else? How many times have we missed it? Well, when you give your tithes, you have the opportunity to give generously to a cause that Jesus Christ can multiply bigger than you could ever imagine. Uh, if you've never heard this, God's got a bigger shovel than you have. The more you know, you can give with your shovel, but his shovel is always bigger when he gives back out. His calculator is better. His, his math skills are way better than yours. He has some sort of calculus that nobody else has. Like, you can't figure his calculus out because he can do things with numbers that you can't even imagine so the question is is what are you going to do with your reward how are you going to, to to give your reward back for what jesus christ has done for you ushers you guys go ahead and come up this way uh we're going to play a little bit of music bring your tithes and your offering forward please and we're going to have an opportunity to go say hi to everybody in the room so take that opportunity to show some love
if everybody could uh, make your way back to your seats, please. If everybody could uh, stand, we're going to bless this offering, if you would. Uh, point your hand this way. Father, we just thank you this morning for who you are. We thank you for being in this place, God. And we ask that you would just continue to pour out your spirit, Lord. We just thank you for all that you do for us. God, we ask that you would anoint this offering, God, that you would do great and mighty things, Lord, that you would use your amazing calculator to multiply it and do great and mighty things, Lord. We just ask that you would be in the service. Lord, we ask that you be with this praise team, that you would continue to pour out your presence through them, Lord, that you would just help us to get into a spirit of worship, God, because you are the most amazing thing that there ever will be and that there's ever been. And we ask, Lord, that you be with our pastor as he brings the word. Open our hearts to receive it, God, be in every single word that he says, Lord. We just thank you and praise you for all you do in your name. Amen. Uh, just a few uh, announcements. So if y'all didn't have an opportunity to get some breakfast, they have some leftovers. Um, and they will be for sale after service in the cafe, and you can pay them there in the cafe. Um, Pastor Dempsey is going to be at uh, Food City Tuesday uh, between 6 and 7.30 collecting donations for our community. So he needs some volunteers. So there is a ministry opportunity right there if you would like to take that opportunity. Do not forget that we have um, on Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. we have prayer service led by uh, Brother Ken here on the, the front row. Uh, if you're anybody in here is more than welcome to come. It's an hour of prayer. It's a great opportunity to get in the Lord's presence. And that is the announcements. I'm going to turn it over to Sister Teresa. This announcement is for all you beautiful ladies. You know what Saturday is. Our ladies' tea. A tea time of refreshing is what the theme is. And I'm so glad to see several have signed up, but I need you, if you're planning on going, you haven't put your name on there, to sign up today. And if you uh, have a friend, a, a special uh, friend or your mother or sister you'd like to invite, uh, feel free to do that, but please kind of give me an idea so I'll know how many tables to set up and get all the food prepared for that. But we are looking forward to this time on Saturday, a time of refreshing a fellowship together, our First Ladies gathering for this year, and then a refreshment of the word from a dear lady that I've known for 40-something hmm, years. She'll bring a good, fresh word from, from God. And so if you um, have a special teacup or a flavor of tea you'd like to bring, we'll have hot water for that. But we'll have a variety of teas also for you to choose from. And Come expecting a good time, wear your hat if you wear a hat, and however you want to uh, do for a tea. So I look forward to Saturday. It's here in this building, in the big room, at 12 o'clock on Saturday. Thank you. Can we, can we just pray together that the Lord would receive glory and that he would receive honor today through our worship, that our minds, God, we pray right now that our minds would be set on you. Lord, that our hearts would be set on you today, that we would be able to offer you a praise and a worship, Lord, that you are due. We thank you for allowing us to be here today, Lord. Set our hearts on you today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Back the waters 
God's for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, sing these O's again. I think everybody can sing O. You can follow us, but I want to give you a challenge today. 
If the Lord has set you free, if you were a slave to sin, which we all were, we were born into it, if you were a slave to sin, if you were in bondage of addiction, if you were in bondage of selfishness, if you were in bondage of gossip or anything that could represent slavery in this house today, if you were in bondage to darkness, if you were in bondage to whatever it may be, I want you to sing out these O's and throw your hands up because we're going to let the Lord know we haven't forgotten that He's the same God that led the Israelites out of slavery. He's the same God that He led them out of bondage in Egypt. He's the same God today that He was back then. And He will lead you out of wherever you're at if you let Him, okay? So come on, we're going to sing these O's. And I want you to throw your hands up in the air. If the Lord has done anything for you, led you out of bondage, we're going to sing it. Come on. Yes. Yeah. 
can we just just take a minute let's just tell him thank you Lord <laughs> thank you thank you Lord that you made a way you made a way where there did not seem to be a way God that you made a way <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, just keep that same mindset. Just focus your mind on Him right now this morning. He's a great and mighty God that no matter what happened yesterday or this past week, He's right there with you the whole way. He's never left your side. He has got you by his hand. He's led you out of Egypt. And if you're in Egypt, he can lead you out of Egypt. Can I get an amen to those of you that know what I'm talking about? You see, we repeat these songs sometimes, multiple times. And it's not so that we sound good or pretty, things like that. No, it's so that you can grasp it and understand the power of a mighty God that can lead you out of these places, that can come down where heaven meets earth, and lives are changed and hearts are open so that the Holy Spirit can pour out and do in you what He wants you to do. So this morning, remove your barriers. Ask the Lord, God, search me. If there's anything within me, remove it in Jesus' name. Because you know what's so cool about it all? What He did in the beginning, He can do right now, today. He's not a limited God. Take it out of your vocabulary. God wants more for you than you want for yourself. So let's do it right here. God, we know that you're the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, we're going to call on you this morning. And we ask you to do a mighty work in our hearts. Jesus, we
my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness.
is my surrender here is where i lay down every lie and every doubt this is my surrender and i will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to
here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm tasting now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. everything that happens today Lord may it be exactly the way you wanted it to happen God don't let us stand in your way don't let us stop you from moving and Holy Spirit we invite you we invite you to rest and dwell in this place. God, dwell in our hearts today. Dwell in our minds, Lord, as we hear the word that you have given to our pastor. Lord, may, may our minds comprehend the words. May our hearts desire to obey them. And may everything that is done line up with your word and your will we thank you we praise you for all that you are we thank you and we praise you for all that you've already been yes, Lord. you are the same God yes, Lord. and we trust you today yes, Lord. with everything that involves us God we trust you today yes, we, do. we thank you Lord for all that you are going to accomplish in this place in Jesus' name. Can somebody give the Lord some praise today? Give the Lord some praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's worship Him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Great job, praise team. Appreciate you guys so very much. You know, in the Old Testament, it was always a common thing when the children of Israel went to war. They always sent Judah out front. They had no weapons but they had the worship, and that's what God's instructions were, and that's why we do worship today in front of everything else. These guys get the enemy on the run. These guys put the enemy on the direction away from here, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm glad for you today. Appreciate every one of you that are here. Thank you for coming. I notice we have some visitors today, and please, 
do what Brent asked you to do. I hope you heard him. There's some cards under your seat. If we could have a record of your attendance, we have a gift for you out front in the Welcome Center. We would love for you to make that a part of your Sunday. We want to know who you are, where you come from, and how to get you back here again. Hallelujah. We appreciate you. Appreciate you coming. Aren't those lily or those uh, daffodils pretty? Aren't they pretty? Man, I've been looking around some of the some of the yards. Miss Tracy's got some blooming down on the bank, and my sister's got how many, Donna? Five thousand that she planted. My goodness. Everything she does, she does overboard. <laughs> and that's a blessing. I get to enjoy it, and I'm so thankful for that. I really Really thank God for His presence in this house this morning. By the way, for those of you that are joining us by Facebook, we're so glad that you are able and that that technology is there for you to be able to join us today. I know that I look back and some of you guys have been having to watch on Facebook, haven't been able to attend, and we're so glad that you are here today. There's something different about being inside the body inside the tabernacle. It's good to be able to worship the Lord at home when you have to, R.C. and Macy. It's good, and that's available to you if you have to. But isn't it good that the Word of the Lord said not to forsake the assembling of yourselves where? Together. Together. Don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. We're together this morning, and I'm thankful for that. So thank you, Facebook friends, for joining us. We really appreciate your attendance online. I want to say thank you to Miss Cindy Adams and Brother Tom. I'm sure they're joining in this morning. Miss Cindy had extensive surgery done this week, and the most amazing thing, she said, Brother Dale, they're going to keep me one night to make sure everything goes okay. And so we found out that night that they didn't keep her. Everything went so well that they sent her home. And she's texted us this morning and told us that she's doing really well. Brother Tom says she's up and about and eating. What an amazing thing after extensive surgery. Can you give God praise for that? We love you, Miss Cindy. We're praying for you. Miss Kathy Thacker had a rough week this week. She had a stroke, and uh, she was thinking, uh, you know, the doctor was thinking, everybody was prognosing that this is going to be a long recovery, things are going to be damaged, things are, are, are tore up, and you know what happens when a lot of people have a stroke. But uh, God reversed it, and by the next morning she was at home, and God is mending her. She still has some headaches that are relative to that, but I understand that that's normal, and God is taking care of all the swelling, and and really the the side effects are going away, and Brother Gary and Miss Sue, it's a blessing to see you guys here this morning. Brother Gary is having some problems with his feet, but he came. Miss Sue still having problems with her back, and she had some knee leg surgery done. God is helping her to recover. The list goes on. Brother Charlie Maloney, has had heart surgery, open heart surgery. He told me this week, Brother Dale, I can't, get, I can't wait to get back. He says as soon as the doctor releases him to where he can be around people, that he'll be back. I think he had uh, a triple heart bypass surgery, I believe is what it was, and he's doing really well. Brother Charlie, Miss Iris, we love you guys, and we welcome you to the service today, and we appreciate you so much. If you need anything, holler at us and let us know. Miss Joy has already prayed this morning, and we're not going to say another prayer here. I'm trusting that God is listening, that the Holy Spirit is here, that God is ready to do whatever needs to be done in this place. And without prolonging or repetitive prayers, you all know... I'm not going to stand in front of you had I not prayed. I'm not going to stand in front of you had I not prepared. Somebody said this morning, I hope that the knife is really sharp. You know, the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged... My God, I feel Him in this house this morning. I want you to know today that darkness gets cast out when the light is turned on. I've been on top of this church this week. I'm not talking about just walking in the altar area and just walking 
walking through the rooms of this church, but we had a leak, and it gave me an opportunity to be on top of the church, and I have marched over 100% of this church, and I can tell you that darkness does not exist in this place. I can tell you that the light of Jesus has been turned on, and that His love and His anointing is bringing light into your life. Now, if you put your sunglasses on and they're really dark, that's your fault. But where I'm at, there's a light shining. Hallelujah. I'm in the light, and I praise God for the light. And I'm glad today that the darkness is broken, and we don't have to... God spoke to me one time many, many years ago, and He said, Why are you swinging a bat at the darkness? Why are you trying to dispel the darkness? All you got to do is flip the switch on. Jesus is the light, and when we flip Him on, darkness has to flee. It can't increase on him. It can't overtake him. Darkness is more powerful than light, and he is light. Whoo, hallelujah. No, no telling what God's going to do today. Look over at your neighbor and say, take your buckle off. Take your seatbelt off. God's going to move. God's going to minister and touch some folks today. I don't know what all I need to announce today, but please remember you ladies, I've heard some of you guys over the last few weeks have been talking about not being connected. If you're not connected to this church, if you're not connected to other ladies, it's your fault. Somebody said, what do you mean? We got a tea coming up this weekend. and I probably won't come because my hat don't fit right, but... The ladies are going to have a wonderful event. What a time for you to get connected. Doesn't matter what age you are, from teenagers right on up to senior saints, you need to be here and do the tea thing. It's, it's okay. I know that's not the culture today, but do the tea thing. It'll make you happy and bless you too. And get involved with it as we go down life's pathway. Uh, Brother David is going to be coming up with a men's thing coming up real soon. You're going to be hearing about that. First Saturday of April. April is going to be a month that you want to look forward to. Things are going to spring forth. Things are going to grow. Expansion and growth is going to happen. April is a month you need to look forward to. But right now, we're about midways in March. Listen to me, guys. There's a rumbling coming. There's a sound of the rustle in the mulberry bush. God's on the move, and God's going to move something... Let me just ask you a question this morning before I go any further. How many of you all been through some stuff? Some of you, I know you've been through some stuff and you're lying because you didn't raise up your hand. Stand up if you've been through some stuff and you're not ashamed of it. You've been through, look at it. Man, look around you. I've been through some stuff, Pastor. Some of you are still stirring in that stuff. Some of you are still right there in it and you haven't been able to get out of it and that's okay. If we go through some stuff, God's got the answer of stuff. You can sit down. Thank you. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here today. I'm going to preach on folk that have been through some stuff. I got a message for you this morning, and I can tell you today it's been a long time since the Lord has poured into my spirit in the detail that he has with this message. I don't know how it transpired. I was talking to Teresa yesterday and talking to her about the message. And what I'm preaching on this morning is, is, is the, the gates of pearl. The gates of pearl. That's today's message. Now, what do you think of when you think of the gates of pearl? Think of heaven. You think of our reward when we get to heaven. And that's part of it. But God began to pour into my spirit as I got studying about the gates of pearl, and, and, and I was absolutely amazed. Let, let me just settle down here a little bit, and let me talk to you a few minutes before we go on any further. As we think about the gates of pearl this morning, I want to look at the actual making of a pearl for a few minutes. Oysters make pearls... Some people, if you're very, very uh, highfalutin today and you want to go with a technical term, some folk call them mollusk. I call them oysters or, or, or clams or wherever you want to go with that. You understand what I'm talking about. 
Oysters make pearls in response to an aggravation, an irritant, or a pain. Anybody been through some stuff? All right, let's go on. Such as a grain of sand or another object that gets on inside of its shell. When any irritant makes its way between the mollusk shell and mantle, that's the outside and the inside, the creature produces something, and I'm going to call this the way I want to call it. You look it up and pronunciate it, pronunciate it the way you want to. I'm going to pronounce it nacre. It's N-A-C-R-E. That's what the mollusk, the, 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 the clam or the oyster produces when it has an irritant. And it produces that. It is a protective coating that helps to reduce irritation. Layer upon layer of this coating is deposited on the irritant until a luscious pearl is formed. The pearl has long been known as the queen of gemstones. Are you listening? to You see that big pearl up there? I thought when I read the Scripture, and I'm going to read the Scripture for you after a while. we get there. But the Bible talks about the gate being made of pearl. It's the most amazing thing. You're never going to look at the gates of heaven the same way again after this service this morning. I promise you, if the Lord opens your spirit and touches you the way He did me, you're never going to forget this message. You're never going to... Because we're headed to a place called heaven. Are, are you... Are you going there? Are you going to make that your home? Is that your future destination? If so, then this is what we've got to look forward to. Before you can get into heaven, you've got to go through the gate. Some of you with me. Some of you already at lunch. There are one, there are one they are one of the most precious gems ever discovered and are believed to have been revered and traded as long as 6,000 years ago. Something that precious to be traded and to be revered for that many years must be something special. The most expensive pearl ever sold at an auction is the La Pregrina or the Wanderer Pearl, which was once belonged to the famed actress Elizabeth Taylor. The necklace sold for over 11 million U.S. dollars, making it the most expensive pearl of that day. Remember, that was in 2011, not too long ago. However, the most expensive pearl today is the unnamed giant clam pearl that you're looking at right now that was found off the coast of an island in the Philippines, valued at a staggering $100 million. It weighs 75 pounds, it's 26 inches long, and it is by far the largest pearl on record. The most valuable of pearls are the larger ones because they take longer to form and are the rarest. Now, I want to show you something this morning. Can everybody see that? Those are not fake. Those are valued at between twenty and twenty five thousand smolians. That's a lot of money. Twenty to twenty five thousand dollars. Those pearls are you know why? Because of their size, because of their color, because of their spherical, they're 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 all perfectly round, that, that one right there, even though it's so goofy shaped, did you know that a, a fisherman, when that was first found, and you can go look it up, this is, I don't have time to preach on that, but there's another message there that I may preach one of these days, but a fisherman kept that thing right there under his bed for 10 years, because he didn't know what he had. Now let me drop a little nugget in your bucket this morning. Some of you have no idea what you got. Some of you got no idea what's hid under your bed. Some of you have absolutely no... How many of you have been through some stuff? Young people, you been through anything? You think you have, don't you? Mama went and fixed me breakfast this morning. 
We've been through some. Look at them, Joy. Ain't them pretty? They'd look good on you, wouldn't they? You got 20, I'll sell them to you. I borrowed them, and I'd have a hard time telling the person I borrowed them from that I sold them. Twenty to $25,000. But look at that. Every one of those, I meant to count them, but I forgot to, but every look at them. You like jewelry? Look at that. Every one of them was a pain in somebody's rear end. I know some of you religious folks already mad at me. Every one of those hurt to be made. Every one of them was a pain. Every one of them was an irritant. Every one of them. But they produced the most beautiful thing. But listen, the craziest part of it all, the one that was hurting never knew the beauty that was being formed. Never knew what was going to happen. Okay, I got the message. Let's look at the Word of God. Revelation 21, verses 10 through 21. Now this is what you, if you're a Christian this morning, can look forward to. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we have the most amazing future than anybody could ever imagine. You and I have been born again. You and I are headed to a destination that the Bible says hasn't even entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Are you excited yet? How many of you have been through some stuff? You're going to be glad that you've been through some stuff. When we get through with this message, you're going to know that the stuff that you went through... How many of you got a spouse that's a pain in the... Nobody would say, unless their spouse wasn't here. Then I saw one hand go up. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and a high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone. This is our home coming up. This is where we're going, like a most precious stone, like a jasper so stone, clear as crystal. And she had a great and high wall with twelve gates. Look over at your neighbor and say, twelve gates. And twelve angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. I don't have time to preach it this morning. One of these days, maybe I'll preach on heaven. I've preached on that before, and I shared with you guys that the Bible says that that city is four square. There's three gates on one side. If you look at a box, the city is 1,500 miles from point A, to 1,500 miles to point B. In the middle are three gates, 500 miles between each gate. All the way around that thing, a total of 12 gates. Three times four is 12. Are you with me so far? Let's go on. Three gates the east, then going on to the west. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. He who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. Look at verse 16. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. He measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. That stands for, if you, if you divide it out and work through it, 1,500 miles. Its length, its breadth, and its height are all equal. Then he measured its wall, 140 and 4 cubits. That is 216 feet. Get this with me. Are you listening this morning? 216 feet tall wall. How big is the oyster that made that pearl? My God in heaven, what a pain that that must have been. Are you with me yet? 216 feet, 
according to the measure of man, or that is of an angel measuring it. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth was an emerald, uh, the fifth, sardonx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, a beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, chrysoprase, the eleventh, jacinth, the twelfth, amethyst. Verse 21, the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Listen closely. Each individual Gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. What are you saying, Pastor? I don't believe that that is a metaphor. I don't believe that the Lord is saying, I took of a little bit of pearl, and I made me a gate. The Bible says, and list all the different stones individually. Those are literal stones. They exist today. There are stones that you can go, I've got a little Bible stone thing and it shows a display of each of those stones. What am I saying? They are literal. Streets of gold is literal. The Bible says it'll be paved with pure gold. The Word says it and I believe it. That don't make it so, but it is so. So when it says the gate is one pearl, I look at that pearl as a pearl that is going to be able to let people in or out. It may not be the full, I like this rendering in the picture, it may not be the full 216 feet high, but it's going to be the size where people can walk in and out. I'm not sure what God's going to do, but I promise you it's going to be beautiful. And if the Word said there are 12 pearls now... I was talking to Teresa, and I went plumb out in Star Wars, Star Wars land, and I come up with an idea, you know, somewhere on some planet. I don't know where it is. It might not be in the Milky Way. It may be some over yonder somewhere. They say there are hundreds of millions of other galaxies other than the Milky Way galaxy, but somewhere today, God has a great big oyster, a great big clam, and it is in the process of going through an irritation, and there's a pearl that's being made that's going to be hung on the gates of that city. Are you listening to me? Somewhere there's an oyster going through problems somewhere say brother Dale I don't know if I believe that well you let me believe what I want to it's in the word of God just not the location God's going to take care of it where's enough gold to pave 1500 miles in one direction solid gold where's it at God's got it he owns the cattle of a thousand hills and the hills under the cows. There may be a planet that's made out of solid gold that God says, I'm going to melt you and use you for the streets of this city. What am I saying? I'm saying we serve an awesome, awesome God. Point number one, I'm hurrying. So let's look for a few moments at the beauty of those gates. Can you imagine the beauty of twelve gates? I'm not sure how big the creature was, but as the light of Jesus is sparkling off of those precious stones in the foundations of the wall, just imagine as the rainbow colors touch that beautiful pearl. These pearls have a fluorescence. They have a incandescence or something that I want to call that I don't have a word for that looks absolutely amazing and it changes with the lighting that they're in. What am I saying? God is light and in Him... There is no darkness. The rainbow was an afterthought of God. He just put it up in the heavens and all the colors. Woo. As the light of Jesus is sparkling off of those stones. What a beautiful pearl that sight's going to be. What a sight. What a sight. Our finite minds can't comprehend what that'll be like. We could talk about the beauty and the splendor of the scene described here for a long time and never get really close to its reality that's going to happen. However, I'm going to head in a totally different direction this morning. You would expect me when I preach on 
the gates of that city, the pearly gates. You'd expect me to preach on the beauty of heaven, and we've just barely laid a foundation, but I'm headed in a different direction. I don't remember ever hearing anybody speak on the price that was paid for the beauty of those gates. Can you imagine the pain and the irritation? Twelve oysters going through all that pain. The gates are the entry point for the beauty that lies just beyond. Wonder what if the Lord is using the pearls for the gates to remind us that great pain was experienced by others for us to be where we are today. I believe the Lord wants to remind us today that to reach our full luster, we're going to have to go through some stuff. We're going to have to endure some pain. We're going to have to go through some valleys. We're going to have to be in some low places. And I know that it's in the low places that we get in the mully grubs. I know that it's in the low places. They're telling us that depression is the number one sickness today. People are depressed left and right. People are taking all kinds of medication, some prescribed and some not, to try to get lifted above the cloud of depression. But can I tell you today, God is light and in Him there is no darkness and in God you can receive encouragement hallelujah remember this morning if you'll allow me to inject a thought here a pearl is a product of a painful situation much like a scar is to the human body. So I started headed in that direction when I began to realize what God was showing me. A pearl is a representation of irritation, even though it's so beautiful. But a scar in the human body is sort of a representation of the same thing. So I want to talk about scars a little bit. You see those scars there, they're the precious representation of the feet of Jesus. Scars can serve as a proof of experience. Or in other words, those of you that stood up a while ago and said, I have been and I am, some of you said, going through some stuff. That stuff that you're going through is probably, lightly speaking, a very irritating situation. Very heavily speaking, it may be a life-changing situation. It may be so hazardous and so helpless and so hopeless seeming to you that you're on the bottom. That you're in a situation you have no idea what you're going to do with. You have no idea how you're going to get out of it. You have no idea what the outcome is going to be. But can I tell you this morning, you may be addicted to drugs, but come to Jesus. You may be addicted to pornography, but come to Jesus. You may be messed up in your mind. You may be health, having health issues. You may be tore all to pieces in every way this morning. But can I tell you, come to Jesus and He'll take those irritants. He'll take those scars. He'll take those pains. He'll take those situations in your life and He'll turn them around for the luster and the glory of God and make something beautiful out of your storm. As David was trying to convince Saul to let him fight Goliath, he said this. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he'll deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. It'd be very hard for me to believe this morning that David fought with a lion and with a bear and didn't get a scratch. We read through that. David said, I did this by the hand of God. But can I tell you, you're not going to walk up to a lion and grab him by the beard unless he slaps you. You're not going to walk up to a bear and say, now bear, let me kill you because you've got one of my lambs in your mouth and him not have an op opposition to that. I believe David had bruises. I believe David had scars. I believe David had the proof in the pudding. 
I believe David had some situations in his body that he could show. And he said, Saul, I can almost hear him. I'm reading between the lines. I've told you before, if you get something out of this message, you're going to have to have a sanctified imagination because God takes me there. And I can see David as he stood before Saul. And he said, Saul, y'all are, y'all are not with it. You're letting this uncircumcised Philistine, you're letting him put down the armies of God. What's going on, Saul? And Saul begins to tell him, nobody can fight this dude. He's huge. He's big as a skyscraper. In today's men's sizes, he's a big dude. Nobody can handle him. And David looks and he says, you know what? The same God that caused me to go out in the wilderness. When a lion stole a baby lamb, I went and got it and I grabbed him. Who's got a beard? You be- oh, there he is. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come with me. I don't want to jerk it out. Come with me. Look here, I got him by the short hairs on his chinny chin chin. And when he comes, do you know that Marty, if I was serious, Marty's going to be swinging them old arms. He's going he to be kicking me if I'm serious. He knows I'm playing with him. But listen, every man, every, you get a hold of a woman, pull on her hair and see what happens. Thank you. They're going to grab, they're going to scratch, they're going to defend, they're going to do everything that they can to try to, And a lion? David said, Saul, I know you've got armor. I know you've got a big sword. I got none of that stuff. I got a slingshot. And I got some scars. I got some proof in the pudding. See this one right here? That's where that bear reached out and tried to kill me. And I grabbed that baby lamb and I got him by the beard and I smote him with my shepherd's rod and I killed him. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying sometimes when you read the Word of God, you need to get into the story. You need to get into the situation of what God is doing and you need to understand God's got a Word for you. Through every situation, it may seem impossible. Your giants may be looming way up here, but God is saying, I'm going to fail him. I'm going to drop him. I'm going to use you to do it. And down the road, I'm going to use the experience to bless somebody else. I can't preach on this this morning. But David took his head, put it up in his tent. David showed everybody what was God doing. God was showing The irritants, they can be a blessing. God was showing the people that had been irritated and abused by Goliath. If you'll let me, I'll use those irritants and I'll bless you. The Philistines ran off that day. The Israelites ran them plumb out of town. Joseph, let's talk about him for a minute. Years of painful times of mistreatment and pain. God was working the ability for him to lead a nation because he trusted in God. What about Paul in the New Testament? Paul's beatings and shipwrecks and prison cells was working in him the ability to write over half the New Testament because he trusted in God. So what the words say? Paul's speaking. Paul said, you know what? If I know that I got these marks in my body. He was writing to the church at Galatia, and he said, from now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks, like David said, of the lion. Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. What marks? Think with me for a moment. Paul was on the ship that wrecked. You remember it? The storm beat it up and he floated in on some boards and so forth and nobody was lost that was on the ship. But that hardship that most of us try our best to stay away from any kind of shipwreck or any kind of inconvenience. We try our best to to program ourselves to go to the luxury side. But Paul, through all of those hardships, when he got on the island of Malta after being shipwrecked, he got there on that island And the Bible says he was gathering sticks to build a fire. And a snake bit him. But he could go 
to the villagers that were not there that day, Ken, and say, look here. See them two marks? That's where Satan bit me. But I'm still alive. They expected him to swell up, but God did a miracle, and there was a lustrous gem that come out of his persecution and his problem. Every stripe on his back could be used as a beautiful pearl. God can do that. I don't want someone trying to give me advice as to how to get the victory if they've never been in a fight. How about you? As I've been met working on this message this week, I gave a, a gentleman a ride and was taking him home. And He started speaking to me and talking to me. I was talking to him about church and talking to him about Jesus and talking to him about our future. His name's Lee. I said, Lee, God's doing so much. And he started talking to me about he'd been in prison and, and how that God had set him free from that life of, of crime and, and from that past life. I said, how long have you been saved, Lee? And he said, about, about 10 years. And I said, what's your secret, Lee? I was giving him an opportunity to open up to me, to talk to me. And he said, Brother Dale, he said, from the time I got out of prison, I made a decision. I wanted to surround myself with people that have been through some stuff. I couldn't believe it. I was working on this message. For those of you that don't preach, uh, you wouldn't understand. But for those of us that do, you know that confirmation is good. And when you hear confirmation, you know God's got the wheels turning. And I began to question him a little more. I said, what, what, what you talking about, buddy? He said, every person that I surround myself with has been through some garbage. I started listening to somebody that had been abused. I started listening to somebody that had been in prison. I started listening to somebody that was addicted, had been addicted. I started listening to people that had been through some stuff. And those people's stuff ministered to me. Listen to me this morning. I'm trying to hurry. This message needs to get into your heart. There's some of you that have the most beautiful pearl. Some of you have several of them. But they're hid under your bed. A hundred million dollars hid for ten years underneath the bed. And that fisherman was a pauper. Didn't hardly have anything, didn't hardly have enough food to eat. And a hundred million dollar pearl laying under his bed. Brother Dale, what are you saying? I'm saying a bunch of you stood up. A bunch of you didn't stand up that know that I'm coming straight at you this morning. You've been through some stuff. Brother Don, ain't many people have been through some stuff that you've been through, but you know what? You've got pearls to show. Pastor, what do you mean? We need to be sharing. There's a group of teenagers right over there, and some of you older saints have decided to sit on your blessed assurance, and you figure that out any way you want to. But when you set on your assurance, you're putting your pearls underneath your bed and you are not showing them. But if you'll stand up and you'll say, kids, I've been somewhere. I've been through some stuff. Then those pearls began to come out of the closet. And those pearls began to not be dusty anymore. And those pearls began to be effective in the kingdom of God. And God is saying this morning, I called each one of you to be ministers. I've called every one of you not necessarily to stand up in the pulpit to, to preach the goodness of God. And Macy, when she gets on Facebook and she says, I've got a roll of adding machine tape of the blessings of God where people have put stuff on my porch that's showing the pearls, that's showing the goodness of God. I've been through some stuff, but if you never tell about the stuff, it's just a big gapping scar and a lot of times it's not effective it's under the bed boy it's quiet in here it's cause some of you know you're sitting you're sleeping on your pearls 
You stood up. You said, I've been through some... What can I do, preacher? Can I teach a Sunday school? If that's what you're called to do, then you ought to be teaching. What can I do, preacher? I'm not vocal. I can't do it. You can come to the house of God, lift up your hands and pull open your shirt, not physically, but spiritually. Pull open your shirt and show the world. I've had open heart surgery. Glory to God. Jesus took out a heart of flesh. And he put a pretty beautiful stone on the inside of me what am I saying I wondered for weeks and I just now know why I left this stone laying here you see that rock Hmm. you see that that's what a heart of flesh looks like and I've often asked the Lord Lord what were you talking about when you said that you would replace our heart See that ugly thing? Somebody gave this to me after a service one day, and it's been laying there for months. Every time I'd start to move it, God had it reserved for today. I said, Lord, what in the world? When I read your Scriptures, I find that you took a heart of flesh. You would think a heart of flesh would be a real pliable, nice heart. And you replaced that thing with a heart of stone? Really? God took the stone and put in the flesh and made it pliable. I said, God, what are you showing us? He took that old ugly stone and turned it around. Look at the other side. Look at the inside of that stone. What am I saying? There are treasures on the inside of you. You like to brag about them? You get on Facebook and you brag about them. Oh, your scar's 12 inches. Mine's 14. <laughs> oh, you had your gizzard took out. I had my gallbladder and half of my heart and two of my kidneys removed. And, and you, you, you ought to see me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a mess, but I've got a scar that goes from my belly button around to the other belly button. I've got them. And we brag about them. But we brag in the wrong way. Joy, would you all come up so I can get out of this mess? What? What are you doing with your scars? What, what are we doing with our scars? You see, scars can serve as a thing of beauty. Scars, Romans 8, 28, We know that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord, those that are called according to His purpose. Scars... God is working something beautiful this morning. And oh, oh, the beauty of those scars. Brother Tony, one of these days, son, you're going to look back and you're going to say, man, 2019, it was rough. 2020, 2021, God, what are you doing? And God says, hang on. I'm building a pearl. Hang on. I can see, Tony, a few maybe weeks down the road. There's no telling when God is going to reveal those. And it, only God can say it's time now to reveal those pearls. And even God may use you when you're still in the middle of a mess. You know how the best way to get out of a mess is? Praise your way out. And if you've got anything to praise God for, maybe He brought you through a past mess. So it may be that God said, I got you in this mess so that you'll get your attention off of this mess and remember that mess so that God can show you how to minister to somebody that's going through that. Man, I'd hate to step on $25,000. You know what I like to do? I'd like to put these things on. I'm not sure what salt and water will do to them. Uh, they come out of salt water, didn't they? Hmm. I don't know, but there's gold in there too. So those are beautiful, but they represent pain. What's in your life that's going undetected by those that really need help today? Where are you? Some of you have been hurt in church. You know what? There's no bigger scar 
than a church hurt scar. Man, that cuts so deep. A few years ago, I'm going to share this, and I, I, some of you that have been with us for a long time, you may figure out who I'm talking about. And you know what? I could care less. I have forgiven, and I have gone on. But a few years ago, there was a knife that went in my back, and I thought it was coming out my belly button. And it twisted, and it was by somebody that was close to me. And they threatened to pull away two-thirds of the church. And they left, and they said, we're going to do it. The person was so close to me, Brother Tony, and I thought, my God, that scar, oh, and I've hid it. Rose, I've hid it, and I haven't talked about it. But this morning, God said it's time to let that scar come out of the closet because some of you here today, somebody hurt you in church. Somebody said something about you. I've even talked over the years to folk that have been abused by pastors and leaders in churches. If you were hurt in a church, can I show you a scar that God is faithful? And through that, I've learned to trust God and not men. It still gets out of sync sometimes, and you want to put your eggs in a basket and trust everybody. But God's the only one you can trust. Macy, as much as I love you, I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. She said she wouldn't me either. I'm just kidding you, sweetheart. I trust her. But listen to me. I know that Macy's a human being. And I'm a human being. And I can get hurt. And you can hurt me. But I want to tell you, I've learned something and i got a scar to show you this morning. It's a pretty scar. It's lustrous and it's beautiful. And God said, you know what? Because you were hurt, you can reach out and touch somebody else that's hurt. And I can walk up and put my hand on somebody that's going through a church hurt. And we could go on with different hurts. That's the only one that I'm in liberty to share to you this morning. But as you stand up all over your feet today, somebody say, whoo, thank God. Nobody said it. I was going to preach another 20 minutes if you had. Jesus is in love with you. And can I tell you that there's not one problem that you've been going through that God don't know about? Pam, will you come up here and help me teach? I know that Miss Pam, she's backwards and quiet. Can you stand up on that? Let's go up the steps. Just come on up here. You're good. Just go on up there on stage. Pam's a quiet person. She's backwards and she don't say a whole lot except for Ed says she says plenty. But Miss Pam, no warning, not knowing, healthy as a horse. But one day her appendix ruptures. And from that, some, some of you know how serious that is. She went through how long in treatment? Twelve days in the hospital and has been through many, many things and complications. But through that, God has made the most beautiful scar. And you know what she told me? As I, she was laying in the hospital when she told me this. I believe I'm right on that. She said, Brother Dale, when I get back, I'm going full time teaching kids. She's here earlier than most any teacher that we have. Why? Because there's a scar that Jesus is letting her shine. And she can say to you this morning, I was healed, and I have a scar to prove it. I was healed. And Jesus can heal you too because He did it for me. Is there anything you want to say or you want me to talk? See, she's quiet. But just her teaching those children is an instrument of the beauty that's showing. Thank you, honey. I didn't mean to embarrass you. And I could pick out many of you that God is calling to show your scars. Brother Robert, I see you back there. I want you to know that there's not a whole lot of men. Come up here with me. Yeah, Deathridge, Mr. Deathridge. 
Bobby Robert. There's not a whole lot of men that's as talented as you are. You work with your hands. And you're going to get mad at me? He works with his hands. Look at his hands. He's got a beat up finger, a gone fingernail. You know why? Because God's been using him and scars are occurring. Whatever you're going through, Bobby, you're going through it because God wants... Do you think God is somewhere on vacation? When you're in the middle of a heartache or a trial, do you think He's absent? Do you think He don't know what's going on for you? Every problem, every hurt, every irritant, every situation has to go across the desk of God before it comes to you. I can show you the Scripture after church if you want me to. Everything that comes to you, if you're a Christian, has to go across the approval desk of God first. Look at Job. Job lost everything he had. I could preach for two more hours. He lost everything he had. But God gave approval for it one item at a time. Satan wanted to take away the head. God said, okay. Satan wanted to take away his health. God said, okay. Satan wanted to take away his family. God said, okay. And one thing right after another. God gave a check mark. He gave permission. But you know why? Because God knew that he was building a scar in that man called Job. He said, Brother Dale, what scars did Job had? He lost his children. He might as well have shot his wife. She tried to tell him to curse God and die. Man, what, what would you have done? Here you are going through all this garbage. I'm kidding, okay? I'm not condoning shooting your wife. What am I saying? God is up to something. When it looks like all hope is gone, when it looks like everything is crumbling, when it looks like God's not anywhere around, God is up to something and He's working for your good for all things. Romans 8, 28. We quote that Scripture and we don't even believe it. You say, Pastor, I do believe No, you don't. If you did, instead of whining in the molly grubs, you'd start pulling open your chest and showing the scar. You'd start helping somebody that's hurting. You'd get on Facebook instead of saying the bad things that's going on. You'd start adding to it. This is what I'm going through. This is what I've been through. How can I help you show my Jesus big and strong? How can I help you to see that you can come through it? I didn't tell you you could leave. I'm just kidding, Bobby. I love you. Thank you. I know I embarrassed you, but I love you. Scars. Scars. Where are you? One more point and I quit. If you're not in a relationship with Jesus Christ this morning, your scars are nothing but a hopeless scar. Hopeless cut. If you are in relationship with Jesus today and you're not closely being used by Him, your scars are pearls underneath the bed that are not being used. Say, Brother Dale, how can I do anything? I don't know. Ask Him. He has a job for every person to do. It may be Brother Dave Talando comes here on Thursdays and Fridays and Brother Ken Hall comes here on Thursdays and Fridays and sit out here on the sidewalk with a sign up. How can we pray for you? What can we do for you? They hand out boxes of food when people go by, go in the dollar store. They make prayer available. That may be what God's called you. I can show a scar. Heads bowed, eyes closed. They're going to sing. If you need something from the Lord this morning, please think about God. If you're in a mess today, if you've been in a mess recently, if you don't see no hope or no help, if you don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about that can take your circumstances that are muddy and turn them into gold, this altar is open for you. God's calling. All the workers, will you help me this morning? People are coming. God is calling. Will you come? 
Brother Dale, I never looked at the gates of pearl like that before. I never looked at that, that they represented the pain and the hurt. Brother Dale, I never looked at my troubles and my heartaches that way before. And God's opened my eyes and I need to make my scars, I need to make my pearls open to other people so that I can bless others. God doesn't make mistakes. If He allowed you to go through it, He trusts that you're able to recover from it and to help somebody else with it. Is anybody else coming this morning? Anybody else coming? Let your pearls be a thing of beauty. Let your pearls shine for Jesus. Let your pearls glorify God. Let your scars lift up His name. Let your hurts. Maybe you prayed for your spouse for many years. Let your scars and let your hurt be used by God to help somebody else going through that situation. Maybe you're still there. Maybe you're still praying. Let the relationship that you have with Jesus speak. Let the scars come forward in luster to help somebody else. Who else is coming? God's calling. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, sweetheart. Who else is coming? Brother Dale, I'm in a mess. I feel like I'm pulling teeth this morning. But I want to tell you, when you drop the pride, when you drop it and open your chest and you come to Jesus, you're going to realize there's trophies there. There's beautiful things there that God wants to use to help somebody else. We're supposed to be helping each other. Are you coming? God is calling. Brother Dale, I have some pearls that have been hidden under my bed. Brother Dale, I'm in a mess and I don't know what to do with it. Brother Dale, I'm, I'm worried. I don't know how to get past it. The best way to get out of a mess is to show the pearls of the past mess. When you remember what God did for you before, you know God's going to take you through this. You raised up your hand or you stood up, I've been through some stuff. If you come through it, obviously, you're here this morning. It didn't kill you. I've been through some stuff but I'm still kicking. David said, I kill the bear and I kill the lion by the grace of God. And here's my scar to prove I've got the pearls to help somebody else. You need Jesus, church. We're in times when the world is scarred and hurting. We need to be the ministers. We need to be the helpers. Our scars need to be shining. Our pearls need to be showing. Do you need to dust them off this morning? Jesus is calling. Several are in the altar. If you want to come, come on. If the devil's trying to tell you to stay where you are, you really need to come. Because the devil knows that when your pearls get dusted off, he's got a problem. He's got a problem. Anybody else? One, two, three, anybody else? Four, five, six, seven. If you're going to leave, leave quietly, please. I really appreciate you being here. Remember, if you're a visitor, check in at the welcome desk. We love you so very much. We pray that you will go with God. If you do, God will always go with you. You can't outrun Him. You can't overrun Him. He's there with you. He loves you more than you can imagine. And He wants you to share and to show your pearls. You've got them. Use them for God. Oh, I'm the latest. I'm sending.
Oh 